Hey y'all, and welcome Ravens to this premiere. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Breaking news, the war has begun. Everyone, take cover. The war has begun. World War I, known as the Great War, began in 1914 after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Of all, this murder catapulted us into a war that would wreak havoc and take 16 million people's lives. The first battle of 1914, the British and French went against the Germans to invade them, driving them successfully back north of the river. But this meant this hellish war would continue on for three more sufferable long years. And the war is beginning. And so we are starting off here in the campgrounds here. This is not our family that's going to war, but we are here with our British soldiers and they are preparing themselves for the war because as you can see they are actually the first ones that are going to be being shipped off so they're just getting themselves all ready to go ahead and go out and be a part of the battle and so you know they've signed themselves up they've been here that at boot camp well not boot camp but this is their quarters they're all here they're all in their military gear they've been living here for a while they kind of know the ropes and what they've been used to their general lives in the quarters nearby and they are just waiting for the command that it is time to head to the trenches and when it is time for them to go for the trenches then that is exactly what they're going to do and we'll send them across the way to the trenches and then they are going to fight in the war but for now they're just enjoying themselves they're gonna have themselves a little bit of a fire they're gonna play a little bit of music and they're going to try to go ahead and just try to relax knowing that this could very well be the last time that some of them see the others you know I mean they are part of a brotherhood some of these guys are you know what they would consider family to one another's now and it could be the last time they see each other because as we well know with war especially back in this time they didn't always come home they didn't get to you know be a part of groups that got to go home to their families and so they I think are definitely cognizant of the fact that this very well may be the last time they see one another and so they are just trying to relax best they can um, knowing that um, tomorrow is the start of <laughs> the start of the um, possible worst day of and last day of their lives <clears throat> and honestly I don't really know what's gonna happen to these little pups but that's sad so they're just getting on here playing some mischief on one another and just having a good old time and they're just having themselves a little bit of a bite here before we have to go ahead and ship them off using the war mod but there is a group here and I want to go ahead and show you where our other group is there are two groups that are actually going to be going off into war in this first session and the second group is just over in the other campground and both of these groups are going to be going in the first and so this group here is also going to be heading off to war and they're just getting a little bit of jogging in yep they can like fitness so this group also will be going and heading out into the trenches so if you look here 
Um, so we've got this group here that will be going, this group here that will be going, and our trenches are here. So both groups will head to the trenches and they'll go to war. And as you can see, everyone is just on the edge of their seats. They are in a really foul mood. No one is happy. Everyone is tense for shipping out. They are really in a bad place mentally. They are really stressed about the fact that war is upon them. No one is in a good place. They are at each other's throats. They're all arguing. They're you know that camaraderie that they had uh, the evening before is definitely misplaced now they are no longer happy they're not wanting to sit around the campfire and play the guitar they're not wanting to play, have any mischief now the only thing that anyone's doing is slamming things and getting in each other's face and screaming and yelling and hollering because the tension that they're feeling is right there at that surface and it's just too much to contain and too much to bear because they know right around the corner is them and the face of danger and they don't know what they're supposed to do now so their tensions being so high they're just unable to keep it together so everybody's at each other's throats and it would also look like everybody has to pee um but nobody wants to go to the bathroom i'm not really sure what that's all about but like you gotta pee but you sat down on the rock and look at our little war dogs. So in World War One, they had war dogs. And the dogs went to war with the men. And they would help find the injured men. And they would sniff out the, st the um, injured men. They would carry messages uh, back and forth to the men. Like they would put like little messages on their collar. And they would carry those messages. So the war dogs were very vital parts of... Uh, the troop system and so these are our little war dogs they're freaking precious they're not actually going to war in the sims here we're not going to be killing any puppies no worries people we will not be killing any puppies in this episode um so nobody worry about that for whatever uh reason this bathroom does not work so i will replace that so that they can use the washroom because no one can use the washroom but just know everyone in this camp is super, super tense and not happy at all. All they want to do is fight. Look in the little bunker over there. They're at each other's throats. They're screaming. They're yelling. They're carrying on. They just are like picking up hurt sentiments left, right, and center because... They don't know how to contain how they're feeling. They don't know how to express it in a healthy manner. All they are understanding right now is that, you know, war is upon them. They are getting, like, they're about to go face death. And they are freaking out. And they're taking it out on their brothers and sisters. And that's um, not necessarily healthy, but it is what it is. And we're catching ourselves on fire as if we didn't have enough of a problem with tension. Now we have a burned arm, so we've got ourselves a little bit of an injury on top of that. And I am trying to get them to play a little bit of the guitar, maybe to get them to calm down. But no one is, like, just, they don't, they're just too tense. Like, they just don't want to do it. <laughs> He's like, no, take your guitar and shove it. And this guy here, he loves the dog, so he's happy that they're barking, but it's not enough to make him happy. So he grabs the guitar, and he plays the guitar, but it's just not enough to make his tension go away. The tension is too high to make anything else better. I don't think, I think 
bloody skittles could fly from the sky and everybody else would just yeah they'd all still be tense unicorns could fly by but the dogs do seem to be enjoying the guitar and we have this one there who's singing along because he's quite vocal that little one there But as you can see, they are a lot less full of energy today. They aren't carrying on. They are just kind of pensive and sitting around thinking about what they're about to face, full of tension. They're not themselves. You can, t you can definitely see a change in these guys from what we saw in them the previous evening. And as you can see, the Germans did lose quite a few casualties to war, and their war dog has quickly reported to the scene and seen their loss, mind you, fallen asleep, but has reported to the scene, I want it to be known, and seen their loss. <laughs> um, but they did have quite a few casualties, and we do have the coroner on the scene, and the coroner is just going ahead and taking account of the bodies and making sure that they are accounted for and that all of that is taken care of so that someone can make sure the bodies are sent back to their homeland and shipped off to where they need to go so that they are properly buried um, amongst their family members and, and shipped home to where they belong. Um, so we are going to go ahead and head back over to the other campsite and check on our other soldiers here. Boy. Oh. 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 Oh.
for a pass there some night for a reeve. Oh, oh yeah, oh, Sharpa Karu on our Bukwam shall leave. Revive is who me. The Sirak. Oh, so. Gibson. Oh. 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 Shambo. Tarbe. Shabba day. Oh, oh, oh. oh. And the British soldiers fought long and hard throughout the day and into the long night. And as you can see, they have turned back up here at the trench and we are definitely losing some casualties. They did have fewer losses than the Germans um, and our war dogs are on the site, also sleeping, except for the one singing, the one singing queen. <laughs> But we did have a few losses in the British Army as well. And the coroner has been called and is going to show up and take account of these bodies as well so that they can be shipped back to the homeland so that they can be sent to their families as well. As you can see, everyone is taking this very hard because, again, they this is the group that was under attention so much that they weren't sure if they were going to make it home or not. And so they were a very close-knit group that... Um, spent the last 24 hours at each other's throat and before that we saw that they were very very close-knit and even the dogs are feeling this loss um so yeah this is a very sad time indeed and unfortunately a lot of um soldiers felt this pain when they lost their brothers who were like family to them because when you train and you practice and you work and you live, you become like family to those men and women, um, well back then just men, that fight alongside you and you become like family and then when you lose that person in war next to you, um, unfortunately it changes you. Um, and a lot of these men came back very changed with a lot of um, PTSD and mood swings and anger issues and some of them even survivor's guilt um, because they may have lost someone and they felt bad that they weren't the ones that um, you know didn't you know why did I live and they died kind of stuff so um, unfortunately that um, did happen and sometimes still happens so um, trigger warning um, but yeah, I am going to go ahead and move on with this, but unfortunately the British did have their losses as well. War continued on and the U.S. remained neutral, though commerce was becoming harder to obtain. Germany had declared the waters a war zone and began sinking U-ships, commercial and passenger vessels. After sinking five U.S. ships, on April 2, 1915, Woodrow Wilson declared war on Germany, but the U.S. troops still did not engage and ship out for another two years due to needing to be 
approved and passed through Congress the need to send no troops out. The Battle of Zonzo in 1915, Austria-Hungary won a victory due to Germans' reinforcements. The British and Allies had seen dismal failure and had started to retreat. The Battle of Asanzo later had become called the Battle of Caporetto, and after the Allies jumped in, they did start to take back the front. With Austria's troops out, already off fighting for battle, the captain is just here with the war dogs waiting for a word, waiting for the return of them. Waiting for something, some kind of message, some kind of word, anything. Everyone is out on the field and he has no news. And in most cases, no news is good news, but in this situation, that isn't the case. So all of his men are out on the field gone to war, fighting for their lives, and he's just sitting here with the dogs and some crazy man with a cloud around his head. I don't really know. Anyhow, so he's at the base camp and he has no idea what to do with himself. So he's just like trying to kill some time. The dogs are like, you know, we could go for a walk and he's like, you know, I don't really want to go far away. What if there's word, you know? So they're just going to play a little bit of music. They're going to sing a little bit together. It's going to be a great little time. They're trying to distract themselves from the nervousness that they feel because I guarantee you they're feeling nerves. Because in any other case, he'd be on the front lines with him. But, you know, he's getting on up in years and so he couldn't go with him. So he's going to start himself a fire. He's going to roast himself a veggie dog. And he's just going to try to not think about the fact that all of his men are out there without him. In the greatest, deadliest war of all time that we're speaking of at this present moment, right? Like, it's 1915 and up to date, it's the worst thing in the world that has happened. The dogs are like, you gonna give us a bite of that, or what? And big boys, they're like, we really could go for a walk, dude. We really could. No? Okay. Fine. We don't have food. You don't want to take us for a walk. Oh, shit. Well, you know... This is not at all what I had intended. You were supposed to have a nice little... Oh, great. Now we got people coming back from war and you're on fire. You know people can't come back from war when the lot's on fire. It's not going to let that happen. Well, if you don't put yourself out, we're going to have your death on our hands. Have mercy. Let's find out what's going on with the war stuff. Quit being so dramatic. Oh, 
What? The war was happening at sea, in the air, and on the ground. The British were far superior at sea, and Germany made no attempts to further invade the area. The sea battle was called the Battle of Jutland, and the French's aircraft was superior to the Germans as well. So with their help, the British created the Royal Air Force, producing five times more aircraft than the Germans by the war's end. Our Canadian troops went out again, and they also were on the front lines, and once again we went out and put our lives on the line fighting this great war as well. And as you can see, Canada had our losses as well. This war affected millions of people around the world. And as you see, unfortunately, in this group, they weren't so lucky because there was only one man left standing. So in this situation, this would be that situation that I was talking about earlier where you would have that survivor's guilt. He lost his entire team and he was the only one that survived. So he is calling in the coroner to go ahead and count for the bodies and make sure that they are sent back home to their families where they belong on their own ground. The Second Battle of Marnie, where the American soldiers finally did join in, was we successfully pushed back the Germans and launched their own counteroffensive three days later. By November 11th of 1918, Germany was forced to seek armistice and end World War I. But along with World War I, it brought social upheaval. Women had to enter the workforce to make money because their men weren't coming home. This war also spread the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918, which killed another 20 to 50 million people. This war will always be known as the modern war. Many of today's modern guns, tanks, etc. were introduced during this war. So as you can see, the first person in our family to leave and head off to war. This is Devin. And so he kissed his wife goodbye and headed off to war and went off to the trenches. And we are expecting him back at any moment to see if he survived or not. And it looks like he has not survived. We have lost Devin. We regret to inform you that Devin has fallen in the line of duty. Okay. Our nation is grateful for the service of all those 
who've laid down their lives. Okay, so Rose has lost her very, very new husband. Um, they've not been married very long at all. And she was unable to conceive before he passed away. So... She's gonna have to call the coroner. To report a death. Oh, I don't think she's going to take this very well at all. She's so very much in love with him. So they tried to elope once and I had to stop them and push it back because she was very, very young and then they aged up to full teens and they eloped again right before he shipped off, so... Yeah. They actually fell in love over violins. Because they both love music. Oh, that's so sad. I hope you guys have all of your tissues ready because we are mourning Devin here. But when we transition over in the next scene, it is going to be the rest of our family members in the trench and we'll be finding out who we, who else we're going to be losing. Um, we're just saying that he deserves a proper funeral. Is she going to be the one in charge of that? And yes, she will be because she is his wife. And yes, she will be the executor of his estate. Let's see how she takes it. She is very sad. Oh, the sweet thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, let's leave her to this and go ahead and check in on the rest of the guys. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm just like sitting here holding my breath. <laughs> Sorry guys. I just realized I wasn't saying anything. So I'm just like, oh no. <clears throat> so we are at the trenches and I do believe that Liam was the first to ship out. Um, but I can't really remember now that pressures on but um, yeah we will go 
ahead and um, get the guys here to hurry it up so we can find out who makes it and who doesn't make it and I'm nervous. Who do you think is going to live? Who do you think is not going to live? Let me know in the live chat. What do you guys think? Okay, we've got some people coming back. Liam has survived. Back for more. Liam has returned from his tour of duty, though he is happy to be back. He, uh, the experience has left him changed, and Manuel has survived the war. Those are the only two that are back yet? No. Robert's back. But he didn't make it. Oh no, poor Annabelle. No. Oh gosh. She was so in love with him, too. They reminded me so much of Cora and Frederick. Oh. That's so pitiful. Liam's like, oh my god. Well, is someone gonna call the coroner? Don't just stand there. He's like, hold on, I need to cry first. This is tragic. It is. Okay, Frederick's back. And? <gasps> no! Oh my god. Poor Cora. So lost Timothy. Oh my god. How did we lose so many? You've got to be kidding me. Only two of our men lived? Oh my gosh. I cannot believe that. call the coroner. I know you guys are sad. We're sad. I'm upset. You're upset. But we don't just want to leave them out here in the rain. Okay, guys. 
that is really unfortunate. I'm really upset that we only have two people left. But I'm going to show you some photos of their lives. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next one don't forget to like comment share and until the next one I'm going to fly for now my ravens <laughs>